Hello everybody. Up till now we've been looking at object mode. Today I'm going to introduce you to component mode. The first thing I'm going to do is create a polygon primitive sphere. You'll remember from previous videos that you can do a lot with a polygon primitive. For instance, we can go to the inputs, polysphere 1, and we can change some of the sphere's properties. For instance, we can reduce or increase the subdivision's axis or the subdivision's height. And of course, we can go to our toolbox and we can do such things as translating. We can translate on all three axes, on X, Y, and Z. We can also rotate on all three axes, X, Y, and Z. And finally, we can scale. We can do both non-uniform scales on individual axes. And we can also do uniform scales. I'm going to set the sphere back to its defaults by manually inputting its values in the channel box. And in previous videos, we also saw how we could go to our hypershade and apply materials to our objects. And by just using these simple techniques, we are able to create a winter scene. Everything that I've demonstrated up to this point has been in what is called object mode. This polygon sphere that I have in my scene is an object. And as an object, it can be translated, rotated, and scaled. But these objects are composed of parts, otherwise known as components. And if I right-click and hold, on the object, I can see what these components are. We will be looking at three types of components today. Vertex, Edge, and Face. I'm going to select Vertex now. This individual point that I'm selecting is a vertex. Just like selecting individual objects, I can select individual components by clicking on them. And just like selecting multiple objects, I can select multiple components by shift selecting. I now have two vertices selected. The line that connects these two vertices is called an edge and right-clicking on the object will allow me to switch to edge mode. I'm going to select four edges. The surface created by these edges is what is called a face. And if I want to switch to face mode, I right-click on the object and select face. Most of the faces on your 3D models are going to be what are called quads. They have four sides. However, if you look at the poles of my sphere, the top and the bottom, you'll find that there are also triangles. These are also faces. I'm switching back to vertex mode, and I'm going to select the vertex at the bottom of the sphere. Just like objects, I can use the tools in my toolbox to move a component as well. This drastically changes the form of my polygon primitive sphere. I can also select multiple vertices and move them all at once. And of course I can also do scales and rotates. In addition, I can select faces on my object and apply a material to them so that 
a single object can actually have multiple materials on it. So that simple polygon primitive I started with can become something more complex like a birdie that you might use if you were playing badminton. To quickly recap, when you select an object, you are in what is called object mode. And in object mode, you can translate an object, you can rotate an object, and you can scale an object. But if I want to work with the components of my polygon primitive, what I need to do is right click on the object and select the desired component. The components that we looked at were vertex, which were the individual points on the polygon primitive. We also looked at edges, which are the lines that join these vertices. And finally, we also looked at faces, which are the surfaces, the surface areas of our mesh. Remember that you can shift select to select multiple components, multiple faces in this case, and just like the objects, you can move components through translation. You can rotate them. And you can also scale them. And if you wish to exit component mode and return to object mode, once again, you can right click on the object itself and select object mode. And now, once again, I'm working with it as an object, not as its components. Let's take a look at some practical uses of these techniques of working in component mode. Starting with a cylinder, I am going to use some translations and scales to create a bottle. Notice how this polygon primitive cylinder can quickly and easily be transformed into something entirely different. And this time I'll start with a sphere. And once again, through translations and scales, I will create a vase. With these very simple tools and techniques that I have demonstrated in this video, you can take your polygon primitives and transform them into all sorts of different objects. Remember, in an earlier video, I created a winter scene with a snowman using nothing but polygon primitives. This scene was created entirely in object mode. Let's take a look at how we can use these simple techniques that I demonstrated today to push the look of the snowman. By just adjusting the components of these polygon primitives, I can take this snowman and transform it into this one. Let's take a look at what I've done here. The top hat is still composed of two cylinders, but I adjusted its components. The carrot nose is still created from a cone, and the arms were still created using polygon primitive cylinders. The three snowballs that make up the snowman are less perfectly symmetrical and have more weight at their base. And here are the two snowmen side by side for comparison. This has been a quick introduction to working with components in Maya. As always, thanks for watching.